You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? A wizard. And a thumping good one, I'd wager, once you trade up a little. No, you've made a mistake. I mean, I can't be a, a, a wizard. What is the hero's journey? It is a story you know better than any story. In fact, it is the story that has been told over and over in different forms ever since human beings have been telling stories. The Ramayan, The Wizard of Oz, Star Wars, Train to Busan, Bajrangi Bhaijan, Queen, you name it. According to Joseph Campbell, they all share a common thread. In Joseph Campbell's book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, he recounts several stories and myths to explain the hero's journey. The hero's journey has a lot of different elements, but the basic arc is this. A hero who lives in the ordinary world is pushed into an adventure in a special or supernatural world. In this special world, the hero has to go through several trials and tribulations, which they fight through with the help of allies they meet on the way. Finally, they encounter a moment of major crisis, which usually leaves a big impact on the hero, often changing their view of the world. Through this newfound knowledge, they fight the crisis and emerge victorious. Finally, they return to the ordinary world with newfound gifts and knowledge and change the status quo of the ordinary world in a specific way. So is a death in the Ganj a hero's journey? Well, the simple answer is no. In most ways, a death in the Ganj is a tragedy. But unlike in a tragedy, the hero doesn't have a great rise and a corresponding great fall. That is why it defies this genre too. And while it isn't a typical hero's journey, it has the bones to make it one. A Death in the Ganj is the story of Shutu, who is on a vacation in McCluskey Ganj with family and friends. He is the typical underdog, pushed down by those stronger than him. Now at first glance, he has the potential to become the hero to prove his worth to others and himself and emerge victorious at the end. But the director Konkana Sen Sharma takes a different approach. She sets up the perfect hero's journey and then completely turns away from it. So let's take a look at how the story unfolds. The beginning of the film is the end. We know that a death has occurred, but we don't know whose death. Flashback to the first day of that week, the story begins in McCluskey Gunge as we see a car entering the world of the film. So Shutu's ordinary world hasn't been shown to us and we are directly brought into the world of adventure. Shutu is entering this world in a blue half sweater as he is feeling blue. We quickly find out that Shutu is a bit of an introvert and while the aunt he is visiting is kind to him, his cousin and so-called friends are not. Especially Vikram who likes to prove his machismo by picking on him and Nandu who likes to feel like a man by being condescending to him. One of the first things Shutu does when he gets there is to put on an old beige sweater that belonged to his dead father. This sickly coloured sweater symbolises death as we will soon find out that Shutu is attracted or has a lot of empathy for dead people and dead animals. I think that it causes them a lot of pain or something like that. <laughs> How can they feel pain, yeah? I mean, they're dead. So sweet. His most important ally in this strange world is Tani, his niece. She follows him on his adventures in nature and in his interactions with the dead. Shutu is clearly attracted to Mimi, who he knows is having an affair with Vikram, who is already married. We know Shutu is carrying secrets with him as he tells his aunt that his exams went well when they really didn't. The first time death is foreshadowed is when Nandu and Vikram prank Shutu during a fake planchet, saying he'll die first. That night, as the group dances with some locals singing songs about dancing ghosts, Shutu dreams of his own death. At this point, we can deduce that Shutu's current mindset is that of morbidity. And over the course of the adventure, this has the potential to change if he begins to appreciate life. Now, the obstacles in front of Shutu are the people. There's Mimi, whom he is attracted to, but who constantly plays with his feelings. You're so pretty. Could be a girl. There's Vikram, who likes to scare him when he's minding his own business. And there's Nandu, who feels like the one in charge by bullying Shutu. In order to emerge victorious at the end of this journey, Shutu must overcome these three obstacles. 
The first obstacle starts to break down as Vikram treats Mimi badly and she starts subtly turning her attention to Shutu. Shutu is setting up to take down Vikram too when this battle in the form of a kabaddi match is juxtaposed with Shutu's aunt receiving a letter from his mother and as he wins a round it is juxtaposed with the revelation of his failure. Unke fail kulche. At this point Shutu's true crisis is revealed. His depression as a result of his father's death and as it is revealed he is brought down by Vikram back to square one. At this point his aunt stops being an ally stops empathizing with him and tells him to call his mother the one Shutu has been running away from even Nandu is of the opinion that Shutu has to man up and take care of his mother it seems like nobody considers Shutu's grief even for one moment but his path seems to change on new year's eve Shutu is suddenly in a green sweater the green symbolizing life and his distance from death Mimi is also in green meaning she is aligning with Shutu. This is the part in the story where the allies uplift the hero before his final crisis, the coming together of resources. Shutu is suddenly a part of the group, not an outsider. As Mimi is jealous at the sudden appearance of Vikram's wife, she too turns her attention to Shutu. Shutu has the best night, but the hero's biggest crisis is yet to be dealt with. That next crisis revolves around his greatest ally Tani. An important thing to note about Tani is that earlier in the film she forced her parents to let her adopt a puppy whom she named Fluffy. But as the film went on Tani forgot about Fluffy and his care automatically fell to the house staff. This shows that Tani is just as shallow with her affections as the adults around her. The group's general ignorance and lack of compassion shows in their interactions with the staff. For once Shutu decides to do what he wants to do and ditches Tani to go on a ride with Mimi. Mimi takes Shutu to a cemetery. Shutu is baffled by Mimi's disdain for the dead, but he chooses to ignore that for the sake of her company and participates in insulting the dead. Later that day the crisis begins. Tani is nowhere to be found. Now normally in the hero's journey the crisis almost annihilates the hero until at the very last moment they gather their entire strength and knowledge to destroy the antagonist or crisis but things don't quite go this way for shutu at first everyone blames shutu for not looking after tani and then they blame each other and finally as everyone is out looking for tani shutu falls into a wolf trap while tani is found and everyone is happy again They have forgotten about Shutu who lies in a hole as the wolf alive and well stares down at Shutu. It seems like life itself is mocking Shutu who even with his efforts to care about life now lies in a grave. As the hero receives a treasure at the end of the crisis in the form of knowledge, gifts or the safety of the world, Shutu comes to the realization with a tattered green sweater that nobody truly cares for him, not even Tani. On the final day, Shutu is back in his morbid state, wearing his father's deathly pale sweater. His final cry for help goes unheeded by Mimi. Shutu can clearly see the world around him now. a world full of life that has no place for him a world full of fakery and cold heartedness and so shutu kills himself and leaves his mark on a tree that had everyone's name but his this is a tragic end but unlike the death of a hero who dies in glory having made a great sacrifice shutu dies for really nothing He leaves behind a world that didn't care while he was alive and that doesn't care now that he is dead. It turns out Shutu was right. Now that he is dead, he does feel hurt by the behavior of the living. And as the ghost of Shutu returns to the ordinary world, he finds no peace. Overall, we as the audience continue to find ourselves in a bleak world where a hero achieves nothing. While it's comforting to root for the same hero's journey in the form of a new story every time, a death in the gunge serves as an eye opener, teaching us about the tragedy of life, which is often darker than fiction.